Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are. This is uh, Kenneth Mohanji. I am the chair of the Technology, Media and Telecommunications Committee of East Africa Law Society. And it's such a pleasure to sit in Kampala, Uganda this afternoon and uh, introduce this webinar, this topic, and in particular to sit, uh, well, not on the same panel, but at least within the same vicinity as this distinguished group of panelists that we have this morning. And it is such a pleasure to introduce them. But uh, perhaps before that, I'll also just thank East Africa Law Society for putting this together. In particular, Gabriel Achai, who is a coordinator on the call. I'm not sure if uh, David Sigano, the CEO, is also going to join us, but it would be good if uh, the two of you, or, or David in particular, could just be able to say hello before we, uh, before we can move on to the discussion that we have this afternoon. Gabriel, is... Uh... Okay, I think so that we don't have any lag, we can just... Uh... Um, yes. Uh, yes, sorry. Uh, yes uh, sorry chair good afternoon uh chair and uh, our distinguished panelists uh on the session uh our participants and members who have been able to join this session would like to take this opportunity on behalf of uh, east africa law society to welcome you uh to this panel discussion uh, I'm sure that uh, you will learn a lot and uh, we'd like to express our thanks really to uh, the committee and uh, the panel which is on board and uh, on behalf of the CEO, he sends his regards, he's on another call but will be joining us uh, a little later for the session. So uh, Chair, I think I'll hand it over to you uh, to uh, take it away with the discussions. Thank you. Sorry, I was unmuted. Gabriel, thank you very much. And so, yeah, let's start. So I hope uh, the members have already joined. Yes, I'm seeing uh, we've already had a number of people join and more people will be joining us. So for those that have just joined, again, my name is Kenneth Mohanji and uh, I'm a partner at KT Advocates. But uh, this afternoon, I am your host and the chair of the Technology, Media and Telecommunications Committee where we basically dissect and look at topics in the areas of technology, media, telecommunications uh, within, the, within uh, our East Africa, but also generally Africa as a whole and the world. And so this afternoon, it is a pleasure to, that we, to host uh, the panelists that are going to be speaking to you today, in particular around the topic on the law of competition in the East African telecommunications sector, and uh, we chose this particular topic because as we know, the committee looks at technology, media and telecoms. And uh, last year we focused more on technology. Uh, for this year, especially this quarter, we decided to look at the telecommunications aspect and in particular to be able to see how we can skill lawyers in East Africa, specifically young lawyers or those that are interested in expanding their specialty and expertise around how uh, telecommunications law can interest uh, uh, practitioners in the region and particularly as well we made sure that we picked a legal counsel that is in-house and also some that are practicing in in a law firms that the in-house counsel can also be able to share as they share this particular topic what things do you look out for for external counsel you know it's very good to give these tips because the audience that we have this afternoon is mostly lawyers or is actually fully comprised of lawyers within the east africa law society space so it would be good if you could share with all of us to see how do we get the business at Ubuntu Towers, how do we get the business at Safaricom, and uh, so on and so forth. And so going back to the topic this afternoon, competition law is one area that I feel is emerging, at least in East Africa. It is not emerging in other areas or in other jurisdictions, but within East Africa, we know that uh, a few countries have, have uh, commissions or have regulators specifically looking at, at anti-competition. Within the telecom sector, I think that's where we are now uniform across the region. Every East African country does have a communications commission. And under the purview of that commission, we do have uh, a sector, we have uh, people within those institutions that look at anti-competition in particular. And so we, we are going to look at a few things regarding anti-competition 
In Uganda, for example, we have two panelists, um, George Samula, who I will introduce, and Dr. Abudu Salam, who I'll also introduce later. But in Uganda, we're mainly looking at the regulation on anti-competition practices, mostly looking at a case like Ubuntu Towers versus ATC and Airtel, which was a game changer when it came to anti-competition regarding tower companies and also the delinking of these companies and the fair distribution of work and business across uh, the people that are operating in these particular sectors. And so the discussions around competition law in Uganda are still nascent, but we feel that there's a lot to learn from Kenya, there's a lot to learn from Tanzania, and there's a lot to learn from the other jurisdictions as well that have competition law at their core. In Kenya, we know that you have a competition authority in Kenya, which has the mandate to regulate all sectors of the economy, and uh, that also has primary jurisdiction over all matters of competition in the country. We know that uh, Agnes is a key player, being uh, uh, a senior manager for policy at uh, Safaricom, and I'll also introduce her later, I'll read for you her biography uh, in, uh, in a moment, but would like to know what is happening in Kenya in regards to anti-competition, and specifically if there's any, anything you'd like to interest the members around anti-competition, specifically within the, tele within the telecommunication sector. In Tanzania, you have the Tanzania Fair Competition Commission, which has the mandate to promote and protect effective competition in trade and commerce. And so Dr. Goodluck and the moderator, who are both Tanzanian, we hope that you will be able to give us an insight into the law of competition in Tanzania, specifically around the fair practice. And maybe as well, although I took about telecommunications law, I was having an interview this morning where uh, one of the interviews reminded me that uh, when you look at the practice of technology, media, and telecommunications law, before you practice those areas, you must have a good grounding in the other areas of law. And so it would be good as well to share best practice perhaps in other sectors, let's say in uh, sectors within e-commerce, sectors within company law, and how all those really interface or interact. Uh, uh, sorry, what, what, uh, what uh, aspects we can be able to borrow for looking at competition law generally. So that's really what we're going to look at this afternoon. And of course, as well from our audience, we shall have uh, our moderator ask questions and I'll, I'll, after I introduce the panelists, she can then be able to take over and uh, will then guide us on the mode of the presentations with whatever she'll have discussed with the panelists. And uh, beyond that as well, um, once we've uh, uh, gone through and received or heard from the panelists, we can then be able to hear from the audience. And it would be good as well if we could have anyone from Rwanda, anyone from Burundi, anyone from South Sudan, anyone from the DRC, which recently joined our, our, uh, our society, to be able to also share what is happening in those particular jurisdictions or markets. But generally, and uh, this is uh, how the topics will be progressing as we go through the year, this quarter we're looking at, tech, at uh, telecoms. In the second quarter, we shall then look at uh, technology, I think. And then in the last quarter is when we shall look at media. Or we shall look at media in the next quarter and then technology in the last quarter. And so we'll also have an opportunity to be able to hear from each of the East African countries. So if your country is not represented on this panel today, don't worry. We are looking at particular topics and we're looking at, at, uh, at, uh, at uh, countries that had something to share with us in terms of recent developments that, have, uh, that, that, that will interest the members in those particular jurisdictions. So, it's my pleasure now to introduce the panelists today. I will start with Dr. Goodluck Temu. Dr. Goodluck Temu is uh, on a panel this afternoon. He's a partner at Africo Attorneys and is a lecturer at the University of Dar es Salaam School of Law. He's a partner with Africo, uh, and uh, I'm not sure exactly what he lectures. I do hope it's something around anti competition. He's a registered advocate with the High Court of Tanzania and a member of the Tanganyika Law Society, and of course, a member of the East Africa Law Society. He graduated from the University of Dar es Salaam with a Bachelor of Laws degree in 2012 and a Master of Laws LLM in 2013. He also holds a postgraduate diploma in legal practice from the Law School of Tanzania in 2016 and a Doctor of Laws degree, Dr. Juris 2021 from the University of Beirut, Germany. His dissertation was titled Regulation and Enforcement of Competition Law in Tanzania Telecommunication Sector. So you can see why I'm starting with this gentleman. Uh, he has specialized in competition law, telecommunications law, ICT, sector regulation, banking, IP law, and he has lectured and researched extensively on these topics. Doctor, if you could just unmute, unmute just uh, put on your video and just wave before I introduce uh, the other panelists. 
chairs. Our second panelist today is another doctor, Dr. Waiswa Abudu Salam, who is the head legal at Uganda Communications Commission. Uh, that is uh, UCC. That is the regulator of all telecommunications companies and media companies in Uganda with a mandate to license, supervise, and facilitate the deployment of a robust communication sector in Uganda. He is the head of legal and compliance, and I must say a very good uh, head of legal and compliance. Uh, Dr. Abudu is a friend, and uh, he's actually joining us from abroad. Uh, that is abroad whenever you're in, in Uganda in particular. Anyone who is outside of East Africa is in Bulaya or is abroad. And so he thankfully agreed to speak to us this afternoon out of his busy schedule. But he has a doctorate in law LLD from the University of South Africa, a Master of Laws LLM in Corporate and Insolvency Law from Nottingham Trade University, UK, a Bachelor of Laws degree from the University of Dar es Salaam, and a postgraduate diploma in legal practice from the, from, uh, the Law Development Center in Kampala. So Dr. Waiswa has uh, participated in several local and national trainings in ICT, media, media formulation and, and uh, regulation. He formerly worked as a manager of debt collection at Uganda Revenue Authority and, is an, and also as a legal officer in Equity Bank, as well as a part-time lecturer of law in the Islamic University in Uganda, Bugema, Busoga University, and the Institute of Banking and Financial Services. In 2014, Dr. Weisswa authored a workbook titled Fundamentals of Law in Uganda, and has since written a training book for the Institute of Banking and Financial Services on principles of law. But particularly, Dr. Abudu Weisswa is also, since I mentioned he works with the Uganda Communications Commission, which uh, is the regulator for telecoms in Uganda, and will speak to anti-competition in Uganda. Doctor, could you just wave to the audience? Hello, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm honored to be joining this panel. Okay. Our third panelist is uh, George A. Samula, who is a co-founder, chief legal officer at Ubuntu Towers Uganda Limited. Uh, George is a lawyer by profession with a bias in telecoms law. He is part of the co-founders at Ubuntu Towers Uganda, which started an independent, an independent telecoms infrastructure company in Uganda post-exit of Eaton Towers from the Uganda market. They raised initial equity investment of $13 million and date of $35 million in year one of operations, with an expectation to finish 2023 with approximately 400 towers in Uganda. And um, with a discussion with George, it tells me you're also moving to other East African countries. So I hope this uh, webinar perhaps will also give you uh, a good idea as to what to expect when you join the Kenyan market, when you join the Tanzanian market. Uh, the, his responsibilities range from, money, from managing investors, data and equity capital raising, regulatory interface and licensing, compliance, and day-to-day -day executive management of the business. Before starting his own company, George was the head of legal and company secretary at Eton Towers Uganda for five years. Prior to that, he was an associate at Bowman's AF Mpanga Advocates in Kampala. He also worked in the London and Frankfurt offices of Millibank, Tweed, and Tweed Hadley and McCloy LLP, one of the largest law firms in the world in their corporate and uh, m and department. George is also a graduate of law, LLB from Warwick University in the United Kingdom, and an LLM finance from the Goethe University of Frankfurt, Germany. So we have two graduates from Germany. I'm not sure if that's a coincidence, but uh, Dr. Goodluck and uh, George, maybe that's something you guys can bond over. And uh, generally, he's a husband and a father to two lovely girls. And I must add as well, since he has added that, he's also a very good friend of mine. So George, it's such a pleasure to host you on this panel this afternoon. Thank you very much, Kenneth. Uh, it's a pleasure. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, all the participants. It's a pleasure to be here, and I hope we can learn more from each other. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Then our last panelist, before I introduce the moderator, is Agnes Okello, who is a Senior Manager, Public Policy and Market Regulations of Faricom PLC. Agnes is a Senior Executive with 10 plus years of progressive experience, I like that word, progressive, in policy formulation and analysis, regulatory affairs, legal risk management, stakeholder engagement, government relations, and legislative interpretation. She has solid corporate council experience, having served as in-house counsel, both in, the, in government and in the private sector. She has notable success in serving technology service providers, the largest financial service providers in Kenya, as well as the ICT sector's national regulatory authority. At the regional level, she has represented various sector working groups and committees, of the East Africa Communications Organization, 
And uh, generally, I, 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 I would, for Agnes, it was such a pleasure to have you sit on this panel. We are very thankful for your experience. Please say hi to everyone who is uh, watching. Hello, hi everyone. Um, thank you very much for logging in and uh, I'm glad to be here. I really look forward to the engagement. Thank you. And last but not least is our moderator this afternoon, who I see has many accolades and awards behind her. Very nice background, Ange. Very nice background, Angelista. Angelista is a corporate and civil litigation attorney with over 10 years experience in legal practice. She concentrates her practice on commercial litigation, corporate governance, employment, family law, focusing on probate, divorce and custody matters. She's experienced working with highly regulated companies and has provided, that has provided her with in-depth knowledge and experience with dealing with complicated regulatory issues. Specifically, I believe also around the issues we're going to talk about today, anti-competition, and we felt that Angelista, once we hear her voice, we'll understand why we wanted her to moderate. She's a very good moderator. I have attended uh, sessions with her. And so it is such a pleasure to have Angelista moderate our panel this afternoon. So just as guidance, Angelista, this webinar should close at 4 p.m. prompt. And so we should have uh, uh, it, your guide on the mode of the presentation. But by maybe four, by maybe three, by maybe 3.30 or 3.40 latest, we should have finished that we can have enough time for the audience to be able to ask us questions and also enough time for the panelists to respond. And, and then we can be able to close at 4 p.m. Angelista, over to you. Thanks, Kenneth. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Angelista Nashon, as introduced, and uh, happy to moderate this uh, um, session. Uh, I'll be with you in the next uh, couple of, uh, I would say, an hour plus. Um, well, with me, um, I think, Kenneth, thank you. You've already sort of like set the tone of how we are going to run this session. And so I think as order, what I will do is um, when we start the panel, I'll give each panel uh, some time. Uh, and uh, because, you know, we're going to run this session uh, in a way that we're not going to be doing a lot of presentation, but rather we're going to be chatting and discussing um, everything, you know, uh, competition in telecom industry. Uh, and so to start, and because this is all about telecom, I think it's very important for us to actually uh, get an understanding of what we are going to be uh, focusing on. And I think uh, none other than uh, um, Dr. Waiswa, uh, I think, uh, let's start with you, uh, please. Uh, if you can uh, give us a brief description of uh, what really comprises uh, telecommunication sector um, um, and how regulation of the sector is really undertaken. So that we sort of like set the tone for other panels to come in and chat in. Welcome, uh, uh, Dr. Waiswa, please. Thank you, thank you very much, Angelita and colleagues, panelists, organizers, and all participants. Good afternoon from wherever you are. I'm happy to be joining this uh, webinar this afternoon from Paris. Um, so that I could I, I can't have my video on because uh, of network interruption and also where I am there could be some bit of uh, bad background. I don't want to uh, affect your eyesight on the webinar. But uh, I'm glad to be here and uh, to the question that you've asked: How what is the communication sector like and uh, how do we regulate the sector and competition issues? The telecommunication sector, broadly, I can say, is the sector that. Uh, makes it possible for you and myself to uh, to receive uh, broadband access to receive voice and data services and also to be able to communicate from one person to another so the sector is quite broad it includes companies that provide voice services like mtn airtel it also includes companies that provide infrastructure services like the Ubuntu Towers, the American Tower companies that provide the towers that make it possible for the signals to move from one area to another. It also includes companies that provide, for example, the fiber cable connections. Uh, it also includes people or entities that provide vending of telecommunication equipment that uh, uh, make it possible for the providers to achieve connectivity and also 
uh, reach out to the customers. So the sector is quite broad and uh, uh, generally in Uganda, just as it is in East Africa, it's a very vibrant sector. It's a sector that is now becoming a backbone of the entire economy. And if you are to go by the numbers and the contribution of the GDP, you realize that the players in this sector now are almost the biggest taxpayers in the region. So it's a very critical sector, which is making it possible for us to communicate. Now I'm in Paris, other people in Nairobi, other than in Uganda, we are communicating courtesy of the work by the telecommunication sector. If you have children that study online, if you're having meetings online, banking, all those services are now being enjoyed because of the hard work and the innovation of the people in the telecommunication sector. So sometimes when we don't bring it home, people think that these sectors are far away from us, yet in actual sense, they are the sectors that are making our lives very easy. You can now watch TV from anywhere. You can now be on Facebook and broadcast the entire world. That is all happening because of the innovation and the work by the telecommunication company that make it possible for you to communicate seamlessly from wherever you are, both on phone, off the phone, fixed line and mobile equipment. So that is the kind of sector that we are talking, we are talking about. And I'm, I'm sure all of us here are consumers and beneficiaries of the communication sector from wherever, whichever country we are. So how do we, how do regulators generally regulate competition issues in the IC, in the telecommunication sector? As you know, uh, regulation is largely about setting rules that guide the operators. Some people think that regulation is about controlling, is about bulldozing, is about restricting people. But in the telecommunication sector, our approach to regulation generally is to set rules together with the people that we work with. And that's the approach that you see in Uganda, the Uganda Communications Commission, the regulator of the communication sector, uh, our sister agencies like Tanzania Communication Regulatory Authority, CCRA in Tanzania, and the Kenya Communications Authority of Kenya, CAK, and all others in Rwanda, Burundi, and across the world. Most of them, that's the approach they use of setting rules together with the operators for purposes of ensuring that the services provided are good to the country, good to the consumers, and also facilitate further investment and remain attractive to other investors in the, in, in the country. So the, ICE, the telecommunication sector is highly competitive, competitive in the sense that there are so many companies playing a part in the provision of the different services. And this sometimes results into certain practices that may not be very good for the sector and the consumers. So because of that, across the world, different laws have been developed to ensure that regulators uh, are given mandate to ensure that the operators in this sector uh, are moderated in what they do. They are guided to ensure that they do not step on each other's toes in ways that will affect the survival of other operators but also affect the quality of services that are enjoyed by the consumers. As members could be aware, competition law is primarily intended to protect consumers and also to ensure that there is market efficiency in the way services are provided. So competition law doesn't target to punish successful enterprises for becoming big and for getting money out of their innovation, but rather competition law seeks to ensure that as you become innovative as you provide services, as you charge your, you charge fees for your services, you do it fairly, lawfully, in ways that do not necessarily affect other operators in the market and ultimately end up compromising the quality of services that are enjoyed by the consumers. So in Uganda, we use a number of approaches to ensure that there is fair competition in the market. And we are lucky to say that the Uganda Communications Act of 2013 sets the framework for regulation by clearly giving the Uganda Communications Commission mandate to regulate competition issues. In part nine of the act, there is clear provisions on how fair competition is supposed to be achieved in a market. And in 2019, we were blessed to also have regulations called the Uganda Communications Competition Regulations, which are again going to details to set the framework for competition 
and how operators are supposed to respect each other's right, each other's rights and ensure that consumers are enjoying good services without necessarily being affected by another operator who could be abusing their dominance or their position in the sector. So we use different instruments to ensure that there is fair competition. And this is mainly through licensing, uh, through consideration of application for merger and acquisitions, uh, through investigation of complaints that are provided, uh, submitted to the regulator by operators, by consumers, or investigation of issues that have been identified by the regulator, so motor. Because sometimes as regulators, we could see conduct in the market that we consider unfair, that we consider uh, likely to have an effect on competition. So the law gives us mandate to investigate such issues on our own and ensure that we issue directives, we issue orders and the guidance of the sector for purposes of ensuring fair competition and fair play between our, our, our players. So we generally use CC just as it is with other regulators in the market. We use all these regulatory instruments to ensure that our operators are checked. Our operators are operating fairly and not stepping on each other and not unduly uh, subjecting their customers or their competitors to bad and harsh conditions that contravene the generally acceptable rules of fair competition and, uh, and, uh, and good play. So just like it is in football, in the ICT sector, we encourage fair play. Play with your co-operators in a fair way, so that if you have succeed, you succeed because of your efficiencies, you succeed because you're innovative, but not because you've been unfair to another competitor or even duping customers and giving them services that do not meet the expectation. Because at the end of the day, as regulators, our main objective is to ensure that there is stability in the market, there is integrity in the market, but consumers are also enjoying the best service and gaining the best value from whatever service that they are consuming from the operators. So, uh, and the other time, colleague, that's what I can most possibly paint as uh, the situation and how we regulate the sector. Thank you so much, Dr. Waiswa. Uh... To start, uh, you know, without saying so much, uh, I can see why we needed you to be the first one to actually, you know, uh, chat with us uh, about all that is uh, telecom and competition. And thank you so much for actually setting the tone by telling us exactly what uh, uh, the sector is all about. And when we talk about competition in the sector, what, you know, what do we mean and, and what are the things that we uh, uh, sort of like, yeah, would like to see or are happening on the ground in terms of uh, regulatory framework and, 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 and things of this sort. Also, thank you for actually shedding a light uh, on uh, Ugandan um, jurisdiction. Um, and so I think next then uh, we will uh, probably move to Tanzania. And I would like to uh, call on uh, Dr. Goodluck. Uh, Dr. Goodluck, uh, uh, had, uh, what uh, Dr. Waitua has, uh, you know, uh, sort of like described. And so I would like you to tell us uh, um, how is competition in the telecommunication sector uh, regulated in Tanzania? And uh, uh, would you say the current regulation is effective uh, uh, from the Tanzania perspective? Uh, if you can come in and also shed a light uh, on our jurisdiction as well. Welcome, Doctor, good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angelista. And thank you very much, Doctor Waiswa. <clears throat> for setting down a very good background. I will go directly to the questions that Angelista has asked. And I would say briefly that in Tanzania, regulate, uh, co competition is regulated in two ways. So number one, we have the general regulation of competition, which is under the Fair Competition Commission, the FCC. And two, we have um, regulation of competition under what I would call the regulated sectors. Now, regulation of competition generally deals with, um, under the Fair Competition Commission, deals with um, all other sectors of the economy, except as I have said, the regulated sectors. When you go to each regulated sector, you will find that uh, a specific regulator has been uh, established to regulate competition. And when we speak of uh, telecommunication sector, 
the responsible regulator is the TCRA, Tanzania Communication Regulatory Authority, that was established in 2003. Now, it is important to say a word or two about the TCRA. Number one, TCRA is a converged regulator, meaning that it regulates all communication services in the country. Uh, for those who are not aware, convergence brings together classical telecommunication services, uh, internet, computing, and broadcasting into one umbrella. So all these uh, services are regulated by the TCRA. But number two, the TCRA has exclusive jurisdiction on competition enforcement, meaning that uh, the Fair Competition Commission cannot act when it notices, for example, anti-competitive practice or behavior in the telecommunication sector. Of course, it handles measures and acquisitions, but these must first be approved by the TCRA. Uh, number three, it is also important to say, and I think as Dr. Waiswa has already noted, that TCRA is molded in what I would say ex ante regulation of competition. Uh, meaning that it is a body that sets the rules of the game before certain acts have happened and not after. So we, we, the way TCRA is, is expected to act by setting rules of the game before the actors are played in, 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 in order to ensure that actually they, there is uh, observation of rules, actual competition rules. Now, you will notice one thing. When we speak of competition and regulation, we expect to see regulation in those markets where there are no inherent conditions for normal rules of competition to apply. So where we have perfect market condition, perfect inputs, then we do expect competition to happen. Now briefly, Tanzania Communication Regulatory Authority regulates competition in the sector. And it does so in so many ways. In fact, I can say telecommunication sector is one of the heavily regulated sectors. There's nothing that you touch in the sector that has no rules or regulations to guide it. But briefly, I will say three or four things or four ways in which the TCRA regulates competition in the sector. Number one, there is a question of licensing. And licensing is um, is done competitively, it involves market segmentation and also product segmentation. So you can get a license for specific services and in a specific region. How competitive is that is that uh, a newcomer who does not have sufficient financial masses is free to choose how to enter into the Tanzanian market. Number two, there is a question of access regulation. So here we talk of issues like uh, sharing of infrastructure and co-location of infrastructure services. Again, we take an example of a newcomer who wants to enter into a market. This newcomer does not necessarily have to replicate the entire investment process. It can enter into contractual agreements with um, the existing telecom service providers, and they can see how to share or co-locate the infrastructure. And this is very well provided in the regulations. We also uh, can speak of interconnection. And I would say these are very important rules because without interconnection, it will not be possible, let's say, for a customer of Vodacom, Tanzania to call Tigo and vice versa. Now we have rules to ensure that whenever a subscriber of one network uh, service provider wants to call the what uh, wants to call someone from another network service provider, that should be possible. You can appreciate the competitive, uh, the competition aspect of this regulation when, for example, you have a newcomer who wants to enter into a market and um, this newcomer doesn't have sufficient uh, subscribers. So it, ha it will have to invest on marketing strategies now, suppose this person, I mean, this newcomer is able to get, let's say, 1% of subscribers. And suppose these 1% are unable to call other people in the networks. Uh, you can already see the complication there because no one will go to this newcomer 
on the fact that they will not be able to call people from other networks. And here is where the rules of interconnection come in. But uh, the last point that I would want to say here is on the question of regulation of radio frequency or spectrum. Again, nowadays uh, telecom services are offered wirelessly, meaning that we do not need physical interconnection. And this is possible through radio frequency. Now we have rules under uh, the TCRA Act, which enables uh, the TCRA to regulate spectrum and to ensure those who actually want to have access to spectrum are able to do so. When you look um, at, at, at these few rules that I've said, you can already see that the TCRA is a regulator has been doing a lot in setting grounds, in setting rules that will ensure fair play whenever uh, uh, fair play is in the telecommunication market. But then to the last question, the next question that you asked is um, whether this framework is effective. I would say yes on ex ante basis, the TCRA has done a lot, but uh, not much has been done on ex post enforcement of competition law. When uh, something has happened, we expect the TCRA to look into the matter, to investigate, see whether there is abuse of dominance, for example, whether there is a collusion. We do not see a lot that is happening in that area. In fact, there is no visible regulation of competition on export, uh, of export, uh, export basis. So this, in my opinion, is um, a, a, a weakness that TCRA has, and I would say it, it comes from the inherent design flaws that the TCRA has. So it has not been designed to act as a fair competition commission, even though it has powers and authority to do so. Uh, to summarize, I would say the best way here would have been to have a complementary system of enforcement, where ex post enforcement of competition law is done by the Fair Competition Commission, which in my experience has sufficient personnel, resources and experience in addressing competition issues. And the TCRA remains as a regulator that set rules of the game, directing telecom service providers how they can actually enter into the market, play and exit when they want. But the way things are, you will see that the TCRA has more engineers in related fields and they, it has fewer and fewer lawyers and economists and that is why I'm saying that this array is designed as a regulator, ex ante regulator, which it has been doing a lot. But as ex post regulator, well, there are some issues that um, leave a lot to be desired. I think uh, for now that will be it, unless there will be another question. Uh, I'll be happy to respond. Thank you so much, Doctor. Good luck uh, uh, for giving us um, uh, pretty much all we need to know uh, that is happening on the ground when it comes to Tanzania. Um, and so that we actually uh, feel or get um, everything from at least a couple of uh, East, African, East African countries, uh, I would like to move to Kenya now. Um, and uh, I would like to uh, call on uh, uh, Agnes. Agnes, please, uh, we'd like to hear now um, what is happening in Kenya uh, and specifically, and <clears throat> to be uh, more precise, uh, if you could tell us how the competition um, in the telecommunication sector is regulated in Kenya. And uh, if you can add on to uh, what Good Luck has also like shed light on, uh, whether you think uh, perhaps what is available on the ground in terms of uh, you know, the laws and the structure is, is actually effective. You're welcome, uh, Agnes. Thank you very much, Angelista. Uh, so I would like to give a very brief background of uh, the history of telecommunications in Kenya so that we can appreciate how um, regulation of the telecommunications sector in Kenya has evolved. Uh, so pre-independence, uh, we had the East African uh, Post and Telecommunication Corporation, um, EAPTC, which existed uh, until about 1977 when uh, Kenya now set up the Kenya Post and Telecommunications Corporation. 
um, in 1997, uh, within uh, the KPTC, there was a Safaricom which existed as a subsidiary. So within KPTC, um, we had three entities that emanated therefrom. Uh, KPT KPTC was uh, split uh, between the Postal Corporation of Kenya, uh, Telcom Kenya Limited, and the Communications Commission of Kenya. Uh, the Communications Commission of Kenya was set up as a regulator uh, to manage telecommunications. And uh, this happened in 1999, which um, is like two years after uh, Safaricom had been set up um, as a subsidiary within that entity. So when Telcom Kenya moved out of um, KPTC, it actually moved with its baby, uh, which was Safaricom. Uh, fast forward to 2000, um, we get some investors, uh, Vodafone Group PLC, who acquire about 40% uh, stake in Safaricom. And then uh, around the same time, uh, Kencel enters the Kenyan market, actually just slightly before Safaricom now, uh, you know, officially set up. Um, a short while later, uh, Kencel rebranded to Celtel. Um, the, for a long time, uh, the market had two players, uh, which was Kencel and Celtel. Uh, but um, around 2000, in the 2000, say about 2005 uh, uh, or thereabouts, uh, another entrant made it in, and this was U-Mobile. Uh, U-Mobile did not um, last a very long time, um, and around um, 20, I think it was around 2012, 2013, thereabouts, uh, U-Mobile was split up between uh, Safaricom and uh, the then uh, Air, Airtel, it was Celtel, but by the time they were taking over the U-Mobile, it had uh, rebranded to Airtel. So um, in 2004, between 2004 and 2007, uh, there was another entrant who was a tier two uh, operator. Tier two operator means an operator who operates regionally. Um, they had a, a license allowing them to operate regionally in Kenya, and that was Jamie Telecommunications. Uh, that was JT, JTL. Um, and around uh, that time, again, between 2004 and uh, 2007, uh, Celtel rebranded to Zane, rather it was acquired uh, by Zane. And then around the same time, M-Pesa uh, makes its entry into the market. In 2008, uh, remember there's still Telcom Kenya who has uh, sold its stake to, to Vodafone and Safaricom is set up as an independent entity. We have uh, Jami, uh, JTL, Jami Telecommunications. Uh, Telcom Kenya sells 51%, rather the government sells 51% uh, to France Telecom, which establishes itself in Kenya as Orange uh, Kenya. Um, in 2008, uh, Safaricom uh, gets listed on the Nairobi Stock Exchange. Um, around 2010, Airtel makes an entry. Uh, they acquire Zane and make an entry into the Kenyan market. And then in uh, 2011, they are able to launch their mobile money service, which is um, Airtel Money. And then in 2013, uh, France Telecom, who had invested in Telcom Kenya, are able to increase their shareholding to 70%. Um, in 2016, they sell off their stake, 60% of their, their orange uh, Kenya stake to Helios partners. And then in 2018, they are able to launch uh, Tcash. Now, if we look at the regulatory environment that has enabled all this, uh, we will see that Kenya has a very robust uh, regulatory, uh, competition regulatory regime. And so we start with the Communications uh, Authority of Kenya. Uh, at setup, it was set up as Communications Commission of Kenya. But then the feeling was that there is a lot that they could not do uh, with the title commission and they needed to give some teeth. Um, the laws that established the, the Communications uh, Commission of Kenya were reviewed. They um, added some powers to it, rebranded it to the Communications uh, Authority of Kenya. Um, and this uh, entity was established in 1999. Uh, it is mandated uh, with licensing all the systems and services um, in communications, uh, postal and courier, and broadcasting. 
And uh, one of its key mandates is consumer protection. Uh, it has the mandate to facilitate um, and protect investments. Uh, it also has a mandate to manage competition within uh, its players. So those would be the telecommunications providers, uh, players in the postal and courier place, and broadcasters. Um, and when it comes to regulating uh, telecommunications operators, um, it also has oversight over infrastructure, how it is deployed, uh, the resources that are required to, to activate the networks, that is the spectrum, as well as numbering resources. And they also have a mandate to monitor the activities of uh, licenses or operators, uh, if you'd like to, to call them that, to ensure that whoever it licenses are able to conduct their business within uh, the ambit of the law and the conditions that they have set up uh, for them in their license condition. So now this introduces another level of uh, regulation in the framework. We have the Kenya Information and Communications Act, which sets up the, the authority. Then we have licenses which are issued by the authority, which also stipulate the conditions within which uh, players uh, are supposed to conduct their, their business. And then uh, within the act, there are various uh, regulations that help the authority discharge its mandate. So for example, um, if we look at the fair competition and equality of uh, treatment um, regulations, uh, it has very express provisions on management of competition. Some of them um, state that the CA is supposed to ensure uh, fair competition. And this is at section 84 uh, R of the act. Uh, it also prohibits anti-competitive conduct. Um, and then it also empowers the CA to receive complaints and investigate them. And then um, it also sets out anti-competitive practices and conducts that the players in the industry are not allowed to engage in. Furthermore, uh, the act um, and the regulations also define what is dominance um, and then how that dominance will be treated. Uh, interestingly, we also have a competition, um, competition authority. So we have two CAKs in Kenya, we always joke, you know, which, which is the CAK. So there's the Communications Authority of Kenya, which uh, styles itself as the CA. And then there is the Competition Authority of Kenya, which styles itself as the CAK. And so the CAK um, also draws its uh, mandate from the Competition Act, which set it up. And its role is to promote and protect effective competition across industries. So regardless of which industries you're in, the competition authority has oversight. Um, it also manages anti-competitive practices. Um, it engages in the approval of mergers and acquisition. And of course, uh, um, consumer protection is key. Uh, as Dr. Waiswa has ha had earlier outlined, uh, competition um, at the heart of competition management is the consumer. So all that is done in the approval of mergers, in the restriction of uh, anti-competitive practices, is um, the end game is to protect the consumer. And then it also has uh, the mandate to, to um, investigate and uh, stop practices that uh, amount to abuse of buyer power. Um, I will not go into the detail um, of what the Competition Act uh, uh, entails, but I would just like to point out that, um, as we can note, in the Kenya Information and Communications Act, we have provisions on competition management, and in the, co uh, in the Competition Act, we also have uh, provisions on competition management. Now, how does this work for these two, uh, two players? Um, at the initial setup of the competition uh, authority, we had a couple of hitches here and there because then it was not clear who had the mandate to, to um, investigate and declare, uh, say, dominance. And uh, I, I can bravely say here that, you know, we've, we've had uh, murmurs and um, complaints. This is public knowledge that has been out there in the media about uh, Safaricom being dominant. But again, I would like to reiterate uh, what Dr. Waiso said that uh, competition management is not about punishing dominance. It is just ensuring um, all the players play by the rule. However big, however small, they are able to, to, to do their business in a fair way and to make gains from their investment in those businesses. So um, 
with the with the dominant speak, then uh, there were questions around uh, who has the mandate. Uh, now the CA is very much the ex ante regulator because it sets the rules prior to you even starting to play the game of this is how you're going to play the game. And some of those rules include even approving um, offers and promotions, what we call tariffs uh, and promotions that we offer to our customers. So for example, um, in Kenya, all players are supposed to, to, to file for the services that they offer to customers. Um, for our Kenyan um, participants, uh, you may have heard of, uh, you know, tariffs like Tubonge or Nyakua or promotions like uh, Nyakua. All those have to go through the communications authority for vetting. And some of the things that they look at is um, if uh, as Airtel or Safaricom, you're going to roll out a certain service in the market, what impact does it have? How does it affect the customer? And how does it affect your, your, your counterparts in the market? And if you're playing by the rules, then they have no reason to, to stop that. Um, the Competition Authority of Kenya is the export post um, regulator who comes in after um, you have done something that they perceive to be having an effect in the market. And how do they do this? They conduct inquiries, they conduct investigations, and they can do it of their own uh, will or where a complaint has been lodged to them then they're able to reach out to whether it be Safaricom and say, you know, we have received this complaint or would like to look into your practices with regards to this particular service you're offering. Um, we are obliged to provide documentation and information. So they've done a couple of those inquiries and then they come back and tell you, okay, um, we have inquired and what we see is that you're playing by the rule, it's okay, keep doing what you're doing or they even propose uh, certain changes that you can make to your to your services to, to make them more competitive and to allow uh, the other players to also compete uh, within, to compete fairly. Now, interestingly, we also have um, another regulator who, although does not have uh, express powers to manage competition, has certain aspects of competition management. And this is the Central Bank of Kenya. And why do I mention this is because uh, Safaricom, as you all know, uh, is a provider of the M-Pesa service. Um, and there are certain rules that have been put in place to ensure that there are also other players who are able to provide mobile money uh, services. So the Central Bank of Kenya uh, also manages um, uh, M-Pesa through the National Payment Systems Act. Um, and there have been some decisions that they have made or advisories that they have made uh, to the industry to allow the players there to, to play fairly. Uh, we have seen things like, um, you know, Safaricom opening up its agents uh, and then the interoperability of the mobile money systems. And those come from engagement with the Central Bank of Kenya, where they see that, you know, there are other players who who also um, want a share of the pie, then they set the rules, they give advisories to the industry, and all the operators or licensees uh, are obliged to observe them. Uh, we also have the COMESA, Competition Commission. Uh, their mandate largely uh, comes in mergers and acquisitions, but ever so often, um, and you know, as, as you all know, Safaricom has also set up in Ethiopia. Uh, we have had interactions with, uh, with the Comesa office just to ensure that, uh, you know, whatever we are doing across border, although it is not uh, a merger or acquisition, um, does not offend any laws, um, especially when we are dealing with the regional uh, partners. Um, now, Ange Angelis, I don't know if you want me to uh, proceed to answer the question of how uh, regulation of competition has impacted um, has impacted the telecommunications industry in Kenya. Should I proceed with that too? Hi, Agnes. I don't know if it's only about, uh, you know, from my side, but you were uh, breaking at some point. So I didn't even get to hear what you were um, asking me. Um, sorry if you could repeat you were asking. Yes. So I was asking if I should uh, proceed to paint the picture of um, what competition regulation has uh, had, the impact it has had in Kenya, the telecommunications industry. 
Okay, uh, maybe before we do that, uh, let's uh, go back to Kenya. You can uh, keep that uh, uh, to the next round. Uh, sorry, go back to Uganda. And this time I'm calling George. Uh, uh, George, we've heard a lot about, um, you know, what the setup is in Kenya, what the setup is in, in you know, in Uganda, at least uh, in a nutshell, but also in Tanzania. And so I would like to hear from you, and uh, this really from the perspective of a you know, business uh, practicing uh, um, uh, attorney or advocate in the sector, and all the rules and regulations and uh, um, what they actually intend to do, uh, which uh, primarily is protection of uh, consumers. Would you then say, uh, um, in your view at least, uh, whether the current uh, laws effectively maintain a competitive market structure uh, in the sector? Okay, um, <clears throat> thank you very much, Angelista, and uh, good afternoon once again to all the participants. Uh, the current structure of the regulation of competition in Uganda, uh, as indicated by Dr. Abdul Salam, from the competition authority, from the Communications Act and the Communications Fair Competition Act regulations 2019, I think the two of them are fairly robust. Uh, and this I'm speaking strictly to uh, the telecommunications sector. They are fairly robust and quite detailed. Uh, it's just because maybe that the sector has not really pronounced itself on a number of issues and uh, maybe opened up its, 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 its eyes and objectivity to the protections that they have. But the laws are quite well set out and the commission itself is also as Abdul Salam mentioned, is also well structured. They have a competition desk and a department uh, that deals with anything to do with competition across the entire industry. All the players are obliged to submit uh, their agreements, their deals, uh, any offers similar, similar in Kenya, any offers, especially on the MNO side, any offers they have to the public, uh, also they are obliged to submit them to the regulator for approval and to make sure that uh, the industry is fairly standard and, and, and acceptable. The wider aspects may be that uh, Uganda as a country is fairly, uh, amongst the three East African countries, I believe, is still a bit far. We do not have a wider competition authority. I'm glad I saw recently there's been a competition bill that was submitted in parliament. And uh, to the extent that that bill gets passed, uh, we should then now move on to the level of regulation and uh, an oversight across not only just the telecommunications sector, but also all the other sectors, which is something that is badly needed in Uganda, and I think it's long overdue. Uh, once the wider competitions authority has been set up, then there will be more fair play within, the entire, within all the different sectors of the economy. But speaking directly to the telecommunications sector, I believe the current regulation as it stands is fairly good enough and quite strong. Thank you. Thanks, uh, George, for that comfort, really. But uh, now that you're still on, uh, uh, on uh, the bill uh, in Uganda, uh, I would like to actually, you know, uh, stay with you. Uh, but before coming back to you, I would like to go back to Dr. Waiswa. And uh, really, because you've actually tapped into, um, you know, the requirements, which, you know, includes, you know, submitting these agreements and, and stuff. And there was a case in Uganda uh, um, in 2019, which I know for a fact uh, you and, uh, and Dr. Waisa, uh, you know, were involved. Uh, and so I would like to first ask uh, Dr. Waiswa, and then I'll come back to you. Uh, regarding the case. It's the case of uh, Ubuntu Towers uh, U Limited versus American Towers Corporation Limited, ATC, and Airtel. Um, and in the case, it was actually held that certain provisions of a master tower service agreement, MTSA, signed between the parties, uh, that is ATC and Airtel, were anti-competitive in light of the UCC Act, uh, and the UCC competition regulations of 2019. Uh, so please, uh, let's start with uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Waiswa. Please tell us uh, what was really the reasoning of uh, UCC 
in coming into this decision and uh, um, a little bit uh, on the likely impact that you think uh, this decision may have uh, in the sector. Welcome again, uh, Dr. Waiso. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angela Stan. Thank you, panelists, for uh, benefited a lot in listening to uh, the East African perspective on the uh, competition issues. Uh, on the question that you posed, I can for sure state that, uh, like George has noted, competition law in Uganda is still uh, developing, and uh, the fact that we've not we don't have a comprehensive sector-wide law on competition, uh, in a way, has affected the, the extent to which the different regulators have been able to exercise their mandate on competition matters. Because as you might know, some of the issues that bring anti-competitiveness in the market could be caused by factors beyond the communication sector. So for example, Uganda Communications Commission, whereas we oversee competition issues in the telecommunication sector, we do not have mandate to, for example, control how petrol, how, how fuel suppliers deal with our operators with respect to charging for diesel, which is a very big input in the provision of, say, communication services. As you know, a bigger part of Uganda is not serviced by power. So some of our sites, the sites, the, tower, the towers that uh, facilitate communication services, are located in rural areas where there is no power. So many of them run 24-7 on diesel. Now, when the prices of diesel go high and there is no one to regulate how the prices are managed and set by Shell, by Total, and all the other fuel dealers, it then it will naturally cause our operators like ATC, like Ubuntu, to increase the cost at which they carry uh, uh, the MNOs on their towers. And that has a bearing on the cost of uh, services, which as a regulator of the IC of the communication sector, for example, moderate agit or being uh, exploited by the MNOs. Now, because our power does not go into looking at how Shell is pricing its diesel, we have we, we, we cannot control the entire value chain. Similarly, we have no mandate over how much a landlord should charge Ubuntu as rent for a tower that is located on a landlord's house or land somewhere across the country. And those are some of the factors that are in a way are making it difficult for us to effectively regulate competition issues and protect consumers in the telecommunication sector in Uganda. But like George has noted, uh, we are happy now Parliament is considering a bill. And maybe when you ask me another question on that issue, I'll be able to share my perspective on the drop on the bill that is pending before Parliament. But specifically to speak about the issue, the complaint by Ubuntu against ATC and Airtel, uh, this was an interesting complaint that was lodged to the Uganda Communications Commission in 20, uh, 2021. And maybe before I go to that, just for purposes of our colleagues from Kenya, Tanzania, who may not be very much clear about the setup of competition issues in the communication sector in Uganda, the Uganda Communications Commission at the moment oversees competition matters in the entire ICT sector because we are a converged regulator for both broadcasting, telecommunication, career services, and, and uh, online data communication services. We, the law part nine of the Uganda Communications Act of 2013 and the uh, Uganda Communications Competition Regulation of 2019 all empower the Uganda Communications Commission to oversee competition issues in the sector. So at the moment, we have a directorate that is in charge of industrial affairs and content regulation, which has a vision on competition issues. We have a colleague, Kenneth, who heads competition in the UCC, and his team are mainly economists with experience in competition matters, but also they are supported by the legal department, where myself and the colleagues back in Kampala uh, support competition investigations and other issues related to competition matters. And so far, I'm happy to report that we've been able to work together and ensure that whenever we identify any anti competitiveness in the sector, we try to exercise our mandate in the law to 
as much as possible mitigate any effects. So we try to do both post ante and ex ante regulation by looking at the law and ensuring that one, all our operators abide by the rules. And just like colleagues in Kenya and Tanzania have explained, UCC also has those same powers at the point of licensing in ensuring that before we give, we allow in a new entrant, we look at who you are, your capabilities, your relationships with the existing operators in the market. And then if we see anything that will most likely affect your, uh, your ability to fairly compete in the market, we try at that point before we give you the license to ask you to clarify and also remove any bottlenecks that could affect uh, competitiveness in the market. So we try to do that before we give people a license. But also, because we believe in the public sharing their opinions on how we do our work, we try to ensure that before we license a new entrant in the market, we ask for the public to give us comments about that person. So as a rule now, before we give a license to any telecommunication operator, we ask the public to give us comments and raise objections regarding the merits and or capability of that applicant to obtain a license in the market. And we are happy that many times we've received the, com we've received the comments from the public where they, for example, tell us that this company is associated with an existing company. And if you don't do this and that, they are likely to become to collude and cause unfair competition in the market. And through those processes, we've been able to moderate the way some of our operators uh, operate in the market. So coming back to this issue of Ubuntu and ATC, in 2021, we received a complaint from Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a new company that was set up a few years ago by George and his colleagues to join the tower market. The tower market, for those of you who are not aware, is a critical component of the telecommunication sector because the model for most telecommunication companies in Uganda is that the MNOs, the MTNs, the Airtels, like and the rest, do not own, do no longer own towers. So the towers, the masts that you see in the, across the country are no longer owned by Airtel, by MTN. They are owned by companies that set up these towers for purposes of carrying the MNOs. So to the consumers, whenever you say tower, you, are, you will think that that is Airtel, that is MTN, that is uh, uh, an MNO. But in actual sense, those towers are owned by separate companies in Uganda, predominantly by American Tower Corporation, ATC, and now Ubuntu. And of course, some other companies like UTL, they also own a few towers up in some parts of the country, but predominantly, the majority of them are owned by American Tower Corporation. Without those towers, the MNOs cannot provide services to the consumers. And therefore, the way the, the tower companies operate and structure their agreements has a significant impact on the way the MNOs provide services to the consumers. If the tower companies are not effectively providing the service and hosting the MLOs, then most probably the consumers will not also receive quality services. If the tower companies are overpricing uh, the MLOs in terms of rental fees on the towers, the consumers will have to pay a lot because at the end of the day, the MLOs are in business. They will pass over the costs that they're incurring from the, the tower companies to the consumers. And this is a very big constant input to the MNO's operation. So as regulators, we have our eyes widely open to see how operators in the tower market run their business. Because we know if they don't do it well and fairly, we may not be able to control how the MNOs, the MTNs, and Airtel provide service to the final consumers. So as UCC, we try as much as possible to look at the contracts, the agreements that are signed between the MNOs and the tower companies to ensure that the rules of fair competition are properly adhered to before the agreements are signed, but also after the agreements are signed to ensure that there is fair play between the operators. Otherwise, if we lose it at that point, it becomes difficult for us to control how the MNOs will relate with our consumers. And yet, as we told you already, our main focus and the main focus of competition law is to ensure that consumers are receiving quality services 
efficiently and effectively. So in 2021, Ubuntu, which was a new entrant that just acquired the license, uh, what we call a national public infrastructure provider license, which allows them to build and rent out towers across the country. For Ubuntu to break even and survive in this market, it needed to get customers from MNOs. Now, in Uganda, at the moment, we have MTN as the bigger, uh, as the company with the biggest number of uh, customers, and then Airtel and many other operators, Smile, uh, Leica, and UTL, UTCL, sorry, and then other small uh, ISPs. But now, we dis Ubuntu discovered that in 2014, uh, there is another company that was called Eaton Towers, which used to also own towers. And that company was taken over by ATC. They merged in 2019 and formed one company called ATC. So all the towers that were previously owned by Eaton Towers were taken over by ATC. And now ATC owns over 90% of the towers in the market. And now when Ubuntu came in, it discovered that in the agreement that had been signed between Eaton Towers, which was taken over by ATC, there was a clause that made it almost impossible for, for Airtel to give business to any other tower company without Airtel first of all giving that business to ATC. So the agreement was in such a way that before Airtel could give an order to an, another tower company to build a tower for Airtel, it first of all had to ask Airtel, it had to first of all ask ATC that had now acquired Eton, whether or not it could offer those services of building the tower. And if ATC or Eton at that time was able to build that tower at a, at a, uh, at a cost that was deemed favorable, then Airtel would not engage another tower company to build that tower. What that meant was that Airtel had given Eton Towers and ATC what we call technically the right of first refusal. It would only be in situations where ATC and Eton were not interested in building a new tower for Airtel, that it would be the only time when Airtel would be at liberty to identify another tower company to build for it a tower. What that meant was that they were excluding other operators like Ubuntu and any other that could come to do business with Airtel on fair terms. And this in effect meant that for a company like Ubuntu that was just new in the market, it was almost being closed out of competition for business in within Airtel. And from our assessment at that time, Airtel's de demand for tower business was about 40%. And with this clause in this agreement, it meant that Airtel could not give Ubuntu business without first of all giving that same business to ATC and then ATC chooses whether or not to build that tower or not. And most times Ubuntu confirmed that the tower that they would end up getting orders for from Airtel would be those at the most difficult areas like on mountainous, in mountainous areas, areas without power, areas without access roads. And this certain of a new entrant like Ubuntu, it was becoming a very big in uh, limitation to their business expansion and growth. So when they complained to UCC in accordance with the, with the law, we evaluated this complaint and under the Uganda Communications Act and the regulations before we take any action when a complaint is submitted, we are, we are supposed to first of all undertake a preliminary assessment of the complaint and determine whether or not there is a prima facie case that merits us now issuing what we call a competition notice. Indeed, when we looked at the submissions from Ubuntu, uh, internally, we discovered that actually this, com this clause existed in this agreement that had been signed in 2014. And indeed the clause was quite restrictive and it was not Dr. easy for Ubuntu to take over and provide services. Dr. You can Yes, Dr. Waiso, thank you. Um, unfortunately, we are really, really uh, short of time. 
And uh, because of that, and since I'm bringing um, on uh, George, uh, who also uh, was involved in that case, uh, perhaps at this point, um, I would like to uh, call on George very uh, briefly and uh, uh, on point, if you like, for lack of a better word, to also tell us um, now um, what is actually currently happening on the ground. And uh, uh, in your view, do you think uh, it is still difficult to integrate uh, despite the decision uh, uh, and, um, you know, and the laws in place uh, as is right now? But also, if so, how, uh, you know, how, what do you think the regulator can do to address anti-competitive practices uh, in a practical manner? If you could uh, uh, briefly address us uh, on that uh, while we are really keen on uh, on time uh, because we have about maybe the maximum of 20 minutes to round off and go to Q&A. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much once again. And I thank uh, Dr. Abdu for that uh, explanation and uh, the detail was quite important. And it was critical for people to understand the history of the sector so that they can be able to appreciate. Uh, quickly, I could get onto the three main um, three main impacts of, of, of that case and how it has changed the sector. Uh, for starters, those clauses were uh, rightfully uh, refused and uh, deleted. And the, the commission asked the, both the parties to delete the clauses. And uh, now, currently, we are fairly we believe we're fairly competing. Uh, we are now we have an opportunity to to provide other, other incentives rather than just being restricted by way of a clause. We have other opportunities to provide other incentives in order to win business from any of the two customers. So we, we provide uh, innovation, uh, innovative solutions, uh, maybe pricing issues. Uh, we come up with things of uh, like delivery. Uh, for example, before, if there was only one player, you, you wouldn't really mind how fast the site is set up. And that means that an area will become underserved because uh, let's say there was only one tower company, it would take maybe six or seven months to build a site. There's no pressure from the customer. They can't go anywhere else. There's only one player in the market. But now that there are two players who are competing fairly, we came in and we were able to maybe bring up the time for delivery of a site to 30 days. So before now, we find that there's direct impact uh, in the delivery of services from the MNOs into all places across the country, uh, because now both companies are competing on, on fairer ground. Uh, we're also coming up with uh, innovations whereby uh, we look at uh, things like street poles or in-building solutions, low cost sites. These are things that are coming up in the market because of fair competition. If there was only one player in the market, they would not be able to be as agile and innovative. But now the consumer who Dr. Abdul Salam and the UCC really care about are able to get benefits from these innovative solutions. Uh, because now, for example, Airtel is no longer restricted to just give all its business to one company. So I wanted to really bring out the, the impact of that case and uh, the, the wider impact of competition law is quite important. And uh, I think it is, it is critical that the wider, the wider regulations and uh, the competition bill is also pushed through as fast as possible so that the entire country can be able to benefit from that area of law. Uh, currently, what could change and what could be done to improve competition, uh, I think, the commission, I know Dr. Abu is on board and his team may have to maybe widen and increase its resources, have a bit more training, do a bit more benchmarking with uh, fellow East African states that already have these uh, departments quite uh, available. Uh, there's a lot of activity that's going to take place within the telecommunications sector. So maybe quickly I could say resources so that they can be able to investigate and go through these arguments quite fast. It's a lot of paperwork that is involved in many of these documents between these between the, the, the players. So it is maybe important that the commission and any other entity that will be set up is well resourced and uh, has enough people who can be able to handle these issues quite well. Thank you. 
Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, George, uh, for that highlight. And, and I think it's really important uh, that why we are still uh, on that aspect, we go back to Kenya. And, uh, you know, um, as mentioned earlier, uh, uh, Agnes, uh, that, uh, you know, market dominance is also really another issue. So in light of that, I would like us, you, you know, um, you to actually tell us um, uh, uh, what, you know, how, how is Kenya really approaching, uh, you know, um, the interplay between competition and data protection and uh, uh, privacy policy? Uh, if you can um, uh, also try to use um, very little time. I would highly appreciate because we are really running out of time. Yes, Angelista, thank you. So I'll just go uh, directly to it. Um, so as we all know, uh, for provision of telecommunication services, uh, we really are required by law to register the users of our services. And uh, this is entrenched in law uh, in the Kenya Information and Communications Act and the regulations, uh, SIM registration regulations, actually require us to collect some information, personal information from all the customers uh, that we onboard, and that is KYC. And this comes from the background of uh, uh, national security. So it is important that um, just like you accessing all other services, say like banking services, that even for your telecommunication services, uh, licenses and the, the communications authority um, by extension do know who is accessing those services. And for that, uh, we are required by law to collect uh, your identification information. Uh, the list of what is to be collected is actually um, listed in the regulations. Uh, so the regulations say like we have to uh, collect your names, uh, your year of uh, birth, your addresses, and they're all listed in the regulations, as well as a copy of the identification document. This is so that in the event um, there is anything happening, um, or we, you need to access a service for which, you know, we need to know who is accessing that service, we are able to. In case there's an investigation, we are able to provide your identification um, information to law enforcement. And so we really have no choice but to collect that data. Uh, now, there is data that, uh, of course, we collect um, inadvertently uh, by your, your use of services. And uh, I think uh, that is why we have uh, the data privacy or data protection uh, provisions also entrenched in our policies. Uh, if you do look at the Safaricom website, you'll actually see that there is a data uh, privacy policy. And there we outline to our customers uh, the kind of data that we will be collecting um, how we will handle it, what we will do with it. And before um, we even collect it from you, we have to get your consent that we can collect that information. And that is because we also have a very robust uh, data protection uh, framework. We have in place a data protection act. And we also have uh, yet another regulator, and this one is specific to data, the Office of the Data Protection um, um, Commissioner, the ODPC. And so the ODPC um, is a regulator charged with uh, um, ensuring that all data that we co collect from data subjects, which is you know customer our customers, um, is handled in a manner that ensures their privacy, that we do not um, use that data uh, to our gain and to the detriment of the customer, that the customer is aware of what data is collected from them and how that data is used. And if we look at it from a dominance perspective, um, you know, these provisions apply uh, across board uniformly to all um, telecommunications providers, meaning uh, whether it's Safaricom, Airtel, Telcom, uh, JTL, or any other provider in Kenya, you would have to provide your identification uh, information to them. And so that sort of makes us each dominant in our own space with our own customer, because everyone has the same information of their customer. But the Data Protection uh, Act also um, enables customers in the event that they want to, to move and move with their information. Uh, it allows them the right to move with their information at their cost though. So with the, with the, the robust uh, data privacy um, framework that we have, uh, with the provisions that we only collect data that is very specific 
to um, what it is we are providing you. It's, it has a legal backing. Um, I think the interplay between competition management and uh, data privacy is uh, very balanced. Um, I am yet to see a situation where uh, a particular player has actually used that data that they collect um, to perpetrate any abuse of dominance practices because again and uh, i i like reiterating this whenever we have conversations of competition is that dominance in itself is not an offense it is abuse thereof that is the offense and so by the fact that you know somebody's a particular size and uh, they fit within the definition of dominance uh, within the law does not necessarily make them um, an offender it is how they they use their position in the market and if it is to the detriment of the other players that then makes them um, uh, that then brings in the the, the negativity of uh, dominance so additionally, um, over and above the Data Protection Act, if we go back to the Kenya Information and Communications Act and the Consumer Protection Regulations, those also have provisions uh, that, impose, um, uh, that impose the requirement to hold uh, customer information in confidentiality, uh, to get their consent in uh, collecting that information and to ensure that whatever it is used to, the customer is aware and has consented to it. Thanks, Angelista. Thank you so much, uh, Agnes, for those uh, insights. Um, so I think we should go back to Tanzania as well. Um, you know, having looked at all these challenges, uh, we should go back to Tanzania and uh, ask Dr. Goodluck. Uh, uh, my question uh, to you, Goodluck, uh, would be then, um, what uh, do you think are the challenges that regulators face in addressing competition uh, in telecommunication sector but also in addition to that while you answer that uh, please if you can shed a light on uh, um, what you think are emerging trends uh, that lawyers hoping to practice in the sector uh, uh, or in this area uh, look out for welcome again dr Good. Uh, thank you thank you very much angelista i I would say I think in my opinion that the biggest challenge, the number one challenge is the design of TCRA itself. As I already said, TCRA is uh, more designed as an ex ante regulator and it is not very well equipped to address post um, competition enforcement. I remember to have done my research with the TCRA in 2018-19 if I'm not mistaken um and i found out that the tcra had by then uh, 73 engineers but only six lawyers and three economists so you can already imagine that there is no sufficient there was no sufficient human resource to address post enforcement of competition and maybe i will say some few things that might help uh, you to understand uh, why am i stressing on this we need to understand, for example, the nature of Tanzania telecommunication market. It is, strictly speaking, oligopolistic market where we only have three players. We have uh, Vodacom, um, Tigo, and Airtel. Um, surprisingly, this has been the case since, I think, early 2000s, when these three uh, players entered into Tanzanian market. And since then, efforts by other players to enter into Tanzanian market have been met with uh, some complications, including some regulatory barriers, etc. And it is only Halotel that has been, I would say, strong enough to enter into terms and market and penetrate uh, with about 13% of all subscribers. So one would wonder what is happening. Why is it that um, newcomers are able to penetrate terms and market? You can already see that there could be some reasons which could only be addressed if there was um, robust ex post enforcement of competition, uh, which, as I have already said, it is missing. But then I think the TCRA is also facing the question of technological development and diversity. So a lot of services are now being offered in connection to or in association with telecommunication services. So telecom services are not in themselves the end, but also telecom companies are becoming facilitators of other services. 
And they've been venturing into other services, of course, including, for example, insurance. There's a question of virtual payment systems. There's a question of mobile money services. How, for example, is TCRA well equipped to address these issues? Of course, taking into account its human resource structures, uh, structure. One example, for example, you'd want to know, I think by December last year, M-Pesa commanded 39% of market shares. When you look at the percentage of subscribers, you'd also see Vodacom is leading. Now, I'm not saying that that is a problem, and clearly that is not, but with, with what is happening in the market, one would be interested to know, for example, are there aspects of cross subsidization or margin squeezing? Again, TCRA is not in a position to address these issues. You can also look at the area uh, where I think uh, colleagues from Uganda have discussed a lot, the uh, tower, tower market. The same thing is happening in Tanzania. Telecom companies are no longer owning tower, uh, uh, towers. Uh, there, there are new tower companies, for example, Halish Towers and Minara. And this is one of the gray area. It is not very well regulated because the TCRA has no regulation on how this business should be conducted. Yet this business falls under the domain of, of, of telecom sector and therefore Fair Competition Commission cannot directly uh, act on this market. Again, this is a challenge. I would also say one obvious challenge is the, mm. uh, the how things are moving very fast in this sector. There's one author who said uh, the only constant thing in telecommunication sector is that it is always changing. So how quick is um, TCRA in responding to these technological changes. There are questions of big data, for example, at the moment. There's a question of internet of the things. How are these things integrated to telecom services and how is TCRA well equipped to address them? For me, I think uh, this is one of the areas that um, TCRA might want to look into it. There's also one area that uh, TCRA is not looking very well, and I think it is because, again, of its design, it's a question of, for example, market, marketing powers. How much money these big companies put in marketing programs also has a significant in, uh, impact on competition. This, again, is an area that is not very well looked at. So you see a market that is all, 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 uh, display some kind of uh, concentration, these, these uh, three players. Uh, you would expect some active ex post enforcement. It's not happening. You have a regulator which is very active on ex ante regulation, and something is missing. In my opinion, this is the big question. Coming into new trends, I think um, if we have a, a, a person who is interested to practice in, in this area, this person must understand that uh, technology is everything and technology is changing. We are now talking of the fourth industrial revolution, where we'll capitalize on internet of things and, and big data and cloud computing and similar things. These are the things that um, any person who is interested in this area must be conversant with, must be aware of. But number two, it is how uh, integrated the sector is becoming. So you can, if, if you have to factor in the question of convergence, for example, and uh, diversification, then you cannot technically say that I'm a telecommunication lawyer if you do not know, for example, IP law, media law, company law, payment systems, financial regulation, data protection, privacy issue, etc. These are things that you must be very, very conversant with if you want to enter into this area. But one area that is also interesting coming up is the internationalization of regulation of competition. We now have the East African competition body, and the, 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 we have SADC, and we now have African Free Continental Trade Area. All of these bring in international dimensions, and these are the things that we might want to pay attention into in the coming uh, few days or few years because they are likely to shape the entire landscape of telecommunication law in Tanzania. So I would say uh, 
the, 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 the biggest challenge here is the way things are changing very fast and how the TCRA is designed and how we must really be proactive in addressing these changes in order to have a meaningful regulation. As, as others have said, we don't just want to regulation of competition, we do not want enforcement of competition just for the sake of having a legal framework. We need effective enforcement of competition because consumers need to see that in practice. And again, this is the biggest challenge that I think many uh, consumers in, in, in East Africa and particularly in Tanzania are facing. You have competitive sector, yet prices are going up every day. What is happening? Something is off. So we need a robust enforcement system that will ensure ordinary citizen benefit from that um, enforcement system. And for an ordinary citizen, these things like abuse of dominance, uh, merger and acquisition, they do not make sense. They only understand these terms in sense of reduced prices, increased efficiency, and increased quality of risk. I think these are areas that we really have to look into. So in the interest of time, I'll, I'll end up there and maybe I can say a word or two if a chance happens, a uh, chance arise during Q&A. Thank you, uh, Dr. Good luck. And, um, you know, Agnes, uh, Dr. Waiswa, and George uh, for such a very um, good presentation and really, you know, an approach to questions uh, which, in my view, have given us a, an understanding of what is happening currently on the ground in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, really in, in so much detail. And, uh, you know, uh, as you were uh, presenting, I couldn't help but notice that there's a lot of alignment insofar as how regulation uh, is done in the sector among these countries. Uh, also, a lot of similarities as well, uh, which I think for me, uh, at least in my view, uh, you know, sort of like brings a good grounding for the East African um, or the impl implementation of uh, the East African uh, 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 competition uh, authority. And so because of that, uh, there's a question actually uh, from the audience, which I think is in alignment with that. And uh, we have uh, Clara, uh, this is a question to all the panels. Um, so whoever can take that um, will be you know, highly appreciated. And she's asking, um, when is the East African um, Competition Authority expected to start operating? or dealing in, in with matters in competition in East Africa. So if any of you uh, can take that, um, uh, perhaps uh, Dr. Abudu, Dr. Waisa. Okay, thank you very much, Angelisa. Uh, that question is indeed is a good question, uh, but unfortunately I'm unable to answer when the East African Competition Authority will become effective. I mean, the, 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 the law, the East African Competition Law has been around for some time, but unfortunately because of a number of structural implementational challenges at the EAC, we have not yet seen headway in having that law uh, taking, uh, becoming effective and also the authority being established. I'm not sure if uh, my brother, Dr. Goodluck, would maybe be aware of when uh, that law will become effective and also the authority uh, take, take, take effect. But for now, for sure, I know it's one of those uh, expected events, but we are not sure when exactly it will become effective. I think partly because of the politics at the ESC and also the differences within uh, our region. But we hope might be our political leaders and the technical team that ESC will sooner than later fast track processes to have the East African Competition Authority come in place and we see the benefit of uh, our agencies working together to protect consumers. But maybe Dr. Goodluck would want to comment on when that authority will start. Dr. The, the floor is yours. Dr. Goodluck, I mean. Ah, okay. Th thank you. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Waiswa. The last time I checked, um, the members of the East African Competition Authority were already appointed. 
and uh, they were in the process of um, either enacting or finalizing regulations to guide how this body is going to act. So I think I may not be in a position in a position to say when will this uh, 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 body or authority start to work, but for what I know is that this might happen very soon after the regulations have been enacted. There is going to be one problem though, and I think I've seen Dr. Fred Ringo, who was the former Director General of Fair Com Competition in Tanzania. I think he has addressed it in the comments in the chat section. Uh, that act might apply in the general sectors of the economy. But as I have already said, when it comes to regulated sectors in Tanzania, which are many, that act will not apply. The last time I read it, uh, my conclusion, if I am not mistaken, is that it will not apply into the regulated sector. So we will not expect to see this body unless uh, things change. We will not expect to see it uh, regulating competition in the telecom, uh, land transportation, marine transportation, civil aviation, etc. And and that really it makes sense because even the Fair Competition Commission in Tanzania does not have authority over this regulated sector. So I, I see a kind of a regional enforcement problem, but I think maybe we will cross the river when we're there. That, that could be a challenge, but as to when precisely this body will start operating, as in taking cases, making decisions, I can't say, but I know that the commissioners or members have already been appointed and the regulations are being um, drafted or something like that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Goodluck uh, and, and Waisa uh, on that. Um, I think we should move on to another question. Uh, we have a question from Grace uh, Ntambi as well. And uh, she's asking um, um, all panelists, and, and I think Agnes will be probably uh, the first to take that. And she would like to know that due to the challenges faced by the competition authorities, uh, what are your views and take on uh, standalone proceedings in enforcement of uh, um, competition agreements and private enforcement in general? Uh, why are our countries really not adv advocating for this? So, Grace, if you can take that first, and then uh, and then George, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Angelista and. Uh, Grace Ntambi, I think you meant that Agnes takes the, 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 the question. Um, so uh, I, I think uh, speaking from a Kenyan perspective, I think the competition authorities uh, in this respect being the Competition uh, Authority of Kenya and the Communications Authority of Kenya uh, are very well able to um, enforce to conduct and enforce standalone uh, uh, proceedings. So we've had instances uh, where, for example, um, there was a service uh, that was offered uh, by Safaricom uh, to banks. And the Competition Authority of Kenya actually conducted inquiries and then uh, proceeded to conduct the proceedings thereafter. And this uh, inquiry was based on uh, private uh, agreements uh, between uh, Safaricom and uh, the banks. But then the competition authority, uh, given its mandate uh, entrenched in the act, uh, was able to actually uh, make a decision, give a direction, and actually enforce it. And there are very uh, punitive uh, penalties set out in the act that if you do not comply uh, with the, with the um, directives given by the authority, then uh, you would be subject to those uh, penalties. And of course, there is uh, a rep reputational aspect uh, that really impacts the business. And so um, I'm, I'm hard pressed to see how uh, the, the um, authorities or the competition authority, particularly in Kenya, uh, is uh, constrained or uh, faces challenges in enforcing because we've actually seen them uh, really enforce. We've also seen the com communications authority um, enforce um, issues like um, uh, co-location and uh, interconnection. Interconnection um, is, is the connection between, say, like Safaricom and Airtel. Uh, so the systems are interconnected to enable customers of the other call on the other network. 
and where there have been issues uh, that anchor on uh, certain aspects of competition, they have well been able to, to conduct proceedings and even give uh, directions. Uh, but I think I'll let my fellow panelists from the other countries, perhaps uh, uh, Grace's question was with respect to a particular um, country. However, I think um, as Kenya, we, uh, we are very much part of the, the discussions um, in the formation of the EAC uh, competition um, body. And we very much support that, uh, hoping that you know, we would be able to lend the experience that uh, we have had in Kenya, and we'll also be able to glean learnings and challenges that uh, our counterparts in Tanzania and Uganda have had. Thank you. Yeah, uh, maybe I can just add a small part, uh, as Angelista had suggested. Uh, for Uganda, the circumstances are a bit different, of course, because we don't have uh, a competition authority per se, but there have been instances of private enforcement. I think a colleague of mine, Anthea Pailo, uh, mentioned of a case for Easy Money versus MTN. And while I used to work at, but uh, in my earlier years, I remember that case. Uh, I think uh, there was an issue of interoper interoperability of agents whereby MTN had stopped its agents to be able to take on, uh, take on the, the, the systems of easy money. And I think uh, it went all the way, they went to court and court was able to issue fines to MTN. So private uh, enforcement are possible, but now currently only by way of court, whereby uh, you can go to any high court and submit your issue if you have a problem against uh, another party. Uh, any other issues to do with enforcement? Currently, I can only speak to the UCC, which has a competition desk. And as you've seen from the case that was submitted, there have been no issues in terms of enforcement. Uh, if any player in the industry has a complaint, they are free to submit it and work through the competition regulations 2019. The steps are very clear. And uh, I'm sure Abdul Salam and his team will be able to, to, to respond to whether there is a case or an issue. So until we have a wider competition authority, then we shall be able to handle matters at that level. But currently, the, as it is, it doesn't allow us. I hope that gives some sort of answer to Ms. Ntambi. Thank you. Thank you, George. Uh, <clears throat> we are really running out of time, but um, I can see we still have a couple of questions uh, from, uh, you know, from uh, member participants. Um, perhaps maybe uh, because we have had about, uh, I mean, from Kenya and, and Uganda regarding that aspect, maybe we should go back to Dr. Goodluck. Um, uh, if you can also shed a light or, you know, share a thing or two on that as well. While you do that, also there was a question from uh, Dr. Ringo, um, which I, I'll perhaps request you to, to answer it because it was directly um, directed to you. And, and he's saying, um, uh, is it possible to change uh, the law to allow the FCC, the Fair Competition Commission, uh, address the competition uh, disputes and enforcement issues um, to regulate the sector? Uh, if you can also, uh, be brief uh, for us to close in a couple of minutes time. Thank you. Thank you, Angelista. So when you look at the legal framework governing competition in Tanzania, there's no room for private enforcement. And I am not aware of anyone who has tried to test the waters and uh, see what happens, what comes out of it. But in my opinion, I think that would be a very good opportunity because this has been happening in other countries especially if you have a regulator that is not very active on post enforcement of competition, then private enforcement would have been a channel to complement that weakness. Unfortunately, there are no rules to govern that and no one has gone to court maybe using uh, normal channels, civil cases, maybe claiming for damages or seeking for an injunction. And therefore we can say, as of now, that is not happening in Tanzania. And um, in other countries, as I've said, it is possible to go and privately enforce competition claims, 
And in other countries, you can even get what we call treble damages. You get three different types of damages as an incentive to enforcement of computation. I have no problem, and there is no legal just justification why that is not the case. I hope maybe the policymakers will look into that and um, make necessary changes. As for what Dr. Ringo has um, raised in the comment section, I think uh, Dr. Ringo would have been the most appropriate person to answer this question, uh, taking into account his experience. But yes, um, if I were to recommend some changes, I would say give FCC powers to enforce ex post enforcement of competition in the sector. This is possible. And I have already said FCC is more experienced. It has a lot of lawyers, a lot of economists who are able to investigate. Because the problem here is that when you deal with regulation, that is easy. A regulator anticipated certain things might happen and sets rules on how to address those things should they happen. When it comes to ex post enforcement, we are not so sure what these companies are going to do. We are not sure whether they will collude. We are not sure whether they're going to abuse their dominance. This will require active uh, uh, studying, inquiries, observation, trying to study the patterns, behavior, market behaviors, market behaviors, how these telecom network operators do. It is a long process. It is a complicated process. It is a process that requires dedicated, trained uh, human resources. And I think TCRA is not in a position to do that, but FCC can do that. So we can, A, change the law so that FCC also uh, has a jurisdiction on this matter, or we can even have a complementary system. This is possible. We have seen in other countries where both regulators, um, I mean, uh, telecom regulators and competition authority agree on how to work. The modality of how that is going to work might be agreed at a later stage, but I think that should be the right direction Tanzania should take. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Good luck uh, with that. Um, in so far as we still have a lot of other um, questions, um, some of them directed to um, individual panelists and others to uh, all panelists. I'll, I'll just request that uh, my dear uh, participants that uh, we probably uh, you know round off this session for today. Uh, it's really been a very e excellent, uh, um, uh, interesting uh, session, uh, at least in my view. And uh, uh, I would like to really thank you for your time uh, and really devoting uh, your time to you know stay in the session, but also with your uh, insightful questions uh, that really have um you know allow the panels to sort of like address uh what we are uh, we were intending to do from the very beginning and so with that uh, i would also encourage you know the questions that are addressed to panels um yeah please uh, feel free to follow them or contact them directly i see there are other questions that are a bit technical to them uh feel free to reach out Dr. Goodluck uh, is, is, is reachable, George, George, I'm sure is also reachable, Agnes as well, and Dr. Abudu. Uh, perhaps, you know, you may be interested to sort of, uh, sort of like, you know, get in touch with them and get, you know, further insights uh, if you uh, you are interested to know from the sector. Other than that, um, I would like to thank um, Kenneth as well. Uh, thank you so much for organizing this panel. Uh, the interest has been really huge. And we are hoping to see more of this because, uh, as you can see, the participants are still, you know, in the questions. Uh, in the questions. So, uh, as I think, Kenneth, I think it's uh, high time for me to welcome him to close out the session. So, Kenneth, uh, please, if I can give you back the mic, and I rest. Thank you so much for being with us. Wow, Angelista, thank you so much. This has been. Uh very 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 thought-provoking panel you think you know until you have experts that come in and tell you more things that you don't know so for all of you that have been listening thank you for just you know participating in this panel george agnes uh abudu doctor doctor good luck thank you angelista thank you thank you very much for your expertise 
And uh, in particular, we look forward to having more, more discussions. I think for those of you that are, that are keen to follow the next webinar that we're going to be having as a committee, uh, let me just bring this up here so that I can let you know when that is going to be. The next, as we said, in this uh, first quarter, we're looking at, uh, at the telecom space. So the next uh, webinar that, we that we'll have will still look at, at, uh, at the telecommunication space. In particular, we're going to be looking at mergers and acquisitions. And I think the date that we are looking at or that we, have, we, we had looked at is towards the end of March. Gabriel, if you have the date as I look for this, you can. Ah, that's okay. So it will be on the 28th of March from 2 to 4 p.m. the same time. And so we shall be letting you know who the panelists on that particular webinar will be. But that that uh, session will look at mergers and acquisitions and emerging trends in the telecom space. So we shall still continue to interest you in telecom law. We shall bring other experts to speak to uh, the experience with mergers and acquisitions. And also generally, what other emerging trends are present in the technology so in the telecommunication space as well? I think there was uh, next time. Let's get information about the products, cost of data, social media. Yes, Peter. This is uh, something we hope we'll be able to discuss in the next webinar. So the speakers then will make sure that we ask them to speak to what's happening in regards to the products that, that uh, telecoms have, and uh, we'll be keen to receive your feedback then. So again, thank you very much to East Africa Law Society for hosting us. I thank you for the panelists for this very wonderful webinar and to the moderator who has done a wonderful job getting these questions and uh, basically leading the discussion today. So for everyone who has participated, thank you as well. God bless. And uh, I usually like to remind everyone uh, since the weekend is coming up, do spend time to do things that will help you to grow individually, focus on, you know, on, 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 your, on your breath, if you are facing any, any challenges in, uh, in you managing anything throughout the day. And most importantly, just remember that you are loved and that uh, as a society, we're here to help you and to speak to you uh, should you require uh, our guidance or assistance or anything else. Thank you very much for your time, everyone. Thank you and bye-bye colleagues, Kwaheri. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. bye. Have a good weekend.